worship the Lord. I want us to worship God for just a moment. We talked about one sound. Everybody say one sound. There is a kingdom sound. There is a kingdom sound. Everybody say that. There is a kingdom sound. Say it again. There is a kingdom sound. And I want you to understand this, that there is always a sound that precedes a move of God. Everybody say that. There's always a sound that precedes the move of God. Whenever you will find deliverance, wherever you will find healing, wherever you find a move of God, it is always associated with a sound. I want us to take just maybe 30 seconds and we're gonna we're gonna sing this song. We're gonna raise it as an offering to the Lord. But I want us to take about maybe just 30 seconds, if you will. Brother, I just want you to minister on that on that guitar. I want you to raise your hands in his presence and let's just worship God all over this room. Come on, everybody, let's worship God all over this room.
This did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. I want to stop right there. Concentrate on that verse number 18. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out at the same hour. So this morning I want to impress upon your memory and to remind you that God can. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this moment, for this time, for this period. That you have blessed us to be together in these consecrated walls to hear from you. We now, Lord, ask that you would allow this body of clay that you made to decrease, that you would increase in this in this soul that you have created and formed, that you would by your spirit, by your power, by your might, that you would proclaim your word in this body of clay, that you would use my thoughts, my mind, my whole being, that your word would go forth, and that someone who's here who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sin might hear the gospel. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God can. How many of you know that God can? So we begin this particular part of the of this of the message. We, we we begin here where Paul is in Philippi. Paul and his companions they met up with a woman by the name of Lydia. Um, and and because she was nearby, as Paul and the others were having a conversation with some women down there by the, 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 the river. <coughs> Paul, Silas, Luke was there too. And Timothy was there. So at least those four were together. Paul, <coughs> Silas, Timothy, and Luke. They were there. This was Paul's second missionary journey. Amen. Amen. And last week we looked at where Paul had traveled from. Amen. Paul was on a journey. Paul was on a mission. And he had a divine appointment with this woman, Lydia. Amen. 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 And we know from the text that while Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke were talking to the women by the riverside about the gospel, we know that uh, Lydia was nearby and she was what we call eavesdropping Amen. on their conversation. Some call it ear hustling. Amen. She was listening. She was listening to the conversation. And it was so interesting to her that, that she then engaged in the conversation is right there in verse number 14. The, the Bible tells us that God had opened up her heart to receive the word of God. Now, Paul had no idea that he was going to have a rendezvous, an encounter with this woman. A amen. amen. And let me tell you, you have to be so careful about what comes out of your mouth. Amen. A amen. The proverb teaches us that, 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 that the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. So we have to be really careful about what we say because you never know the impact of the words that you have that comes out of your mouth. I will be Amen. mentioning something about that a little bit later. 
Amen. You never know the impact, the eternal impact that what comes out of your mouth is going to have on someone. Amen. Either you can speak life or you can speak death. Amen. A -a -amen. Amen. And whichever you use, whatever you speak, if you speak life, you'll eat the fruit of life. Amen. You will eat the fruit of life. If you're speaking death, you will All right. All right. eat the fruit of death. Amen. Amen. The Bible does say what goes around. He doesn't say it quite like that. But <laughs> he does say, you reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. Well, well, we know that um, um, shortly after that encounter with Lydia there, down there by the riverside, you know Lydia, Lydia, Lydia the seller of purple, Lydia was a woman of means. A amen. She was, a, she was a woman of property. Amen. She, she, she was a businesswoman. She was a woman of integrity. Amen. And even though she was ear hustling and, and she, she was listening in. Amen. She received the Lord Jesus Christ. She was baptized. Not just her, but the Bible says her whole family. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so by that encounter, by that divine assignment that she had with Paul, by that divine appointment that she had with Paul, a church was then born. A local church was born there in Philippi. A amen. And not only was it, was it born, it was formed and it began to grow. Amen. Now we got to know that everything that grows in good. Just because it was growing, amen, because sometimes not only do a plants grow, Weeds grow too. Yeah. Amen. 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 But I'm so glad that, that, that God said in his word, he said, let the wheat and the chair. In other words, let the wheat and the weeds grow together. Amen. Okay, so, so, so Paul and his com companions were given some space at Lydia's house. She was a woman of hospitality also, Lydia. Amen. You have to be careful when you take strangers in. Amen. I'm not saying don't do it. All right. A amen. amen. But you got to be careful when you take strangers in. Oh amen. Because there might be some risk. Yes. And some unforeseen risk. Yes. You open up your door and you allow somebody who you really don't know to come in and live. And, and there are folks that do it. Yes. A a amen. Amen. And, and, and even those that you know, yes. you got to be careful. Amen. Okay. Amen. But Lydia, we see where Lydia, she, she accepted and she received Paul. She received Silas. She received Luke. Mm -hmm. And she received young Timothy into her house. A a amen. And, and, and we don't know how long they were there, but, but on one occasion, a amen, the Bible says that... Um, uh, it came to pass that as they went to prayer, they went to a prayer meeting. They were en route to a prayer meeting, and there was a young maiden, the Bible says. She was a, a fortune teller. She was a fortune teller by, uh, by uh, vocation. And, and, and the Bible says that she was possessed with, with a, a, a spirit of divination. You know, she was a diviner. And what that means is that she was trying, her, her, her craft, her art, was to try and discern the future events in somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. You know that's what a fortune teller is about. That's right. Amen. A amen. We have to also now, because she was a young woman, we must be very careful about what we expose our children to. Amen, amen. amen somebody. Amen. 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 We have to be very, very careful what we expose our children to. Let me say this to you real quick, and then I'm going to move on. The devil has a strong grip in the affairs of the world. Listen now, this was a young woman here. The Bible doesn't give her a name, 
but but she was a young woman who who got involved with with um, sorcery. She she got involved with fortune telling and a spirit of divination. Divination then possessed her. Now now here's what I'm talking about when I say. You got to be careful what you expose your children to because the devil has a strong grip in the worldly affairs. Listen, the, 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 the devil is, is in control of this world. And why is it now so that, that Sunday now has been sold to entertainment? Sunday has been sold to entertainment. Amen. Sports and entertainment. Sunday owns it. Or, or sports owns Sunday. Here's how it starts out. Here this woman, her only means by which she made money to support herself was by selling products that was made by those that she worked for. This is what this tells us here. Listen, her only means of earning money, amen, was by selling products made by those that she worked for. Now, on the surface, it sounds like that's not a bad idea. But what she was selling was good luck charms. Amen. She was selling trinkets that supposedly would bring good luck. And, and, and... And the masters, her masters, were making big money on it. Now, at first, you're in control of what it is that you're doing. A -a -a Amen? But as the clock ticks, listen now, as that clock ticks, before you know it, what was once, a once in a while, experience becomes a habit. Amen. 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 You're in control of how you are engaging in these different kind of activities. Or you're in control of the kind of activities that you allow your children to engage in. But the devil has got a grip on some of these activities that we allow our kids to be engaged all in. Right, right. Amen. And before you know it, although you were in control of, of it, it, there's an axis Amen. where it now begins to control you. Amen. 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 So much so that, that, that you find yourselves uh, being busy doing the kinds of things that, that you really uh, said that you would never do. All right. Tell the truth, Pastor. Come on. A Amen. This woman was a young woman. She was possessed with a, 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 a spirit of, of, that came out of hell. Amen. She was, she was trying to, to tell people of what their future is going to be about. Amen. You know it's got to be the devil was really up in that. And so what we see here in verse number 17 is that, look, take a look. I, I don't know what this woman looked like. Amen. But she was following Paul and Silas and Timothy. Amen. And, and Luke, because the four of them were together. Here she was now all jacked up because she had this, this, she was possessed with this, this, this demon. She was possessed with this, this spirit. Amen. And she's selling all kinds of little trinkets and things of that nature. But, 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 but there was something going on with her because as she was following Paul and him around, the Bible says uh, she, uh, she, she kept on following them. She was persistent. Now, although we're not told how long she followed them, we know that she was persistent in what she was doing, following Paul. Right. And in following Paul, look at what the Bible says. It says that she gave a strong witness to what Paul was about. It's right there in your Bible like it is in mine. 
Verse number 17. This woman followed Paul and she was crying out. She was, she was crying out. She was saying, these men are the slaves. That word servant is the word slave. She said that these men are the servants of the Most High God. Amen. And, and, and she didn't stop at that, but she went on to say, would show unto us the way of salvation. And verse number 18 says she did it many days. Amen. 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 That's what it says there. And this did she many days. So here, every time Paul and Silas and Timothy and Luke would make their way to the riverside, they meet up with this one woman. Obviously, to me, this was a divine appointment. Amen. Paul was on a divine assignment. And here is this woman who was all jacked up. Now, it reminds me of, uh, of, of, a, of, a, of a time when we were in a church. And, and you know that everybody that comes to the church got something going on. Amen. Everybody's got some kind of an issue. Yeah. Everybody's got some kind of a problem that they are hoping that God would intervene in. A amen. But, but, but everybody right now looks pretty good. All right. a a amen. amen. Uh, you know, and, and I smell fragrances. Yeah. Amen. amen. Flowers and yeah. perfumes and colognes. And, and I'm looking at the clothes that you have on. You look good. But I know that, that, that you don't look like what you've been going through. Amen. Amen. I know that there's some stuff going on in your life that, that you're praying, that you're asking God. To, God, God, listen, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to, to, to hang in here. Amen. But, but, but I, I need you to intervene in some kind of way. There was a woman who used to come to the church. And she would come in the door, front door of the church. And she'd be walking. She'd be wobbling. She'd be rocking and reeling from side to side. And, and she had the smell of alcohol on her breath. But she would keep on coming. Every Sunday, she'd make her way into the church. And she'd come in and stand there at the front where the pulpit was there. And, and she would say, Pastor, pray for me. And then she'd turn around and, and make her way. She would exit back out the church the next Sunday. While the choir would be singing and while the, the ushers would be ushering, that woman would come into the church again. Yeah, right. Same way she came in the week before. Yeah. You could smell the alcohol from yeah. wherever you were. Right. And she would keep on walking. She would be wobbling and, and leaning from side to side. And, right. and she kept on coming. She yeah. kept on coming. Yeah. But after a while, after several days, she, she, she started straightening up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she kept coming. Yeah. She kept coming, and before you knew it, amen, the woman joined the church, yeah. and, and she then started dressing different. Yeah. As she started dressing different, she, she, she moved from the back to the front. Yeah. And then she got a post, she started ushering in the church. Yeah. And after she got, she couldn't sing, so she didn't get on the choir. Yeah. And then, but she went to Bible college, yeah. and then she came back as a teacher for the, for the, for the church. Yeah. Don't tell me God can. Yeah. I know that God
part on, uh, you know what I'm saying, we not getting out here at Club right. every day. Right. 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 Break it down. Break it down. You, you, listen, the Bible tells the truth. Yes. Yes. Amen. The Bible is the truth. And, and, and sometimes what we got to look at is, is, is um, if we don't understand what the Bible is trying to teach us, stay with it. Amen. Hang in there. Amen. Because day by day, little by little, little nuggets of truth will, will well up in your heart. Yes. It'll well up in your mind. Yes. And then you'll see things that you didn't see before. Hallelujah. The Bible says right here that, that, that Paul was greedy. Isn't that something? Yes. But Paul was greedy. Here this woman was pressing her way. Yes. Here she was persistently following them. And Paul got upset. Because here this woman was. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess Paul thought that he had done his job. Right. You know, when he was down at the riverside and, and preached the gospel to, uh, 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 was sharing the gospel with these women. And Lydia, remember, Lydia heard and joined the conversation. And as a result, she was saved. She and her, well, here comes this, this little uh, uh, maiden, this little, this young fortune teller, young girl. Following them many days. I had an experience this weekend that I must share with you. I got a call from a woman. And a woman said to me that, that her, her mother was on a hospital bed. Sick and afflicted. She was uh, on her way out. She was on a morphine drip. And, and, and she was being cared for by hospice. And so she asked me uh, about uh, funeral arrangements for her mother. Mm -hmm. And um, so I told her, I said, look, I'll meet you at the hospital. Yes. And so when we got, when I got to the hospital and got up there to where the woman was laid, stretched out on the bed, she couldn't move, she was paralyzed. Amen. But so I decided, and since she couldn't talk, I decided to talk to her and talk to God in a prayer. Amen. And in talking to God and talking to her in the prayer, she got to move in her head. Yeah. She got to move in her head. But there was a young fella who, who was a little, little different. And I don't want to get into the details of how different he was, but, but he was very, very different. Very, very, very different. And standing there watching and listening to the prayer. And, and as, as I was praying uh, and, he, and watching, seeing that he was also still there, um, at the end of the prayer, he says to me, did you save her? He asked me, did I save her? And I was a little taken back by him asking me. I, I let him know that I have no power to save. I can't say, but I can tell you who does. And so I decided at that moment to share the plan of salvation with this young man. Amen. 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 And I shared the plan of salvation with, and I say young man, but he really was kind of both. Amen. Amen. I'm not fooling around with you. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. Amen. And so... In sharing the plan of salvation with this person, mm -hmm. I made my way on home afterwards. And this was Friday. Yes. And don't you know, Saturday, sometime on Saturday, he died. Mm -hmm. not, the, not the woman. All, right. All of a sudden, yes. none of us know what time God's going to call us. Yes. Not, Amen. listen, it wasn't even 24 hours later. Amen. 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 But I, I was able to share with him the plan of salvation. Now, I must say this too, in all honesty. Uh, you know, I was a little grieved at first. Because you're asking me, did I save her? However, I thank God that he was able to suppress that spirit of Amen. old nature yes. in order to allow me to share with this young man the plan of salvation, to let him know that only Jesus Christ
Christ saved. The Bible says, let us know that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. But through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so here in this text, when Paul said here, he said here, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Listen now. Here's what we need to understand. God used this woman's situation. God used her condition and blessed her at the same time. Amen. 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 He used her condition. He used her in the condition that she was in. This young woman. And he blessed her at the same time. A -a Amen. Despite how desperately distraught she was. She was very distraught. And she was, I would go as far as to say, she was just as distraught as that young man was. Here his grandmother was laying on a bed of affliction. He didn't know whether or not she was going to live or die. Amen. And he knew that her time on this life, on this earth, was short. Amen. And asked the question, did you save her? Did you, did you save her? You know, and, and no, I didn't save her, but I know that Jesus can. Amen. And I know that Jesus could hear, hear her, 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 her moan and hear her groan. And so I, I'm sure that what was on his mind was, well, will Jesus hear my moan? Will Jesus hear my groan? Right. Amen. And so you, you have no idea where God or who God is leading you. Amen. Amen. We should not take our salvation for granted. God is moving us in different places. Amen. Day after day after day. And we know, we have no idea, amen, the, the benefit that somebody is to receive from our testimony. So we see here, this woman here, she needed a breakthrough. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. She needed a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Amen. And she got it by being persistent. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, this here, Acts chapter number 16, is the text where Paul went to Philippi, amen, met Lydia, amen, met this little young uh, demon-possessed, spiritually possessed uh, uh, fortune teller, amen, and shared with her the gospel. Because when he said, in the name of Jesus, now, now i got to stop right there. Listen, when you call on the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. amen it means... Three things. It means three things. When you when you invoke, when you invoke the name of Jesus, Amen. It means something serious. You can't be playing around with the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't play around with the name of Jesus Christ because see when you invoke the name of Jesus for anything, you got to really you got to be serious about it. A amen. 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 It, 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 one of the things that you're doing is that you are summonsing supernatural power. Anytime you invoke the name of Jesus, you got to realize that you better be serious about what you're doing. Amen. A amen. amen. When you invoke the name of Jesus, because you are now summonsing supernatural power. Amen. amen. And, and one more thing, you have God's attention. When you, when you invoke Jesus' name, three things happen. Boom, right away. Amen. You got to be serious. Amen. You now summon some authority. You summon this supernatural authority. You summon this supernatural dunamis power. Amen. 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 And you have God's attention. You know, I, I, I didn't want to say complete attention. Because either you have God's attention or you don't. Amen. But when you call in the name of Jesus, yes. when you call God in the name of Jesus, you got his attention. Amen. Remember the blind man? Yes. Yes, he did. Jesus! Yes. Son of David! Yes. Have mercy yes. on me. Yes. And you know that, 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 that the crowd 
will tell you to be quiet. Yes. And they told him, or both of them, oh, yes. they said, be quiet. Uh -huh. But they, 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 they shouted out his name all the loud. Oh, well, Jesus! When she was, when she said, "These servants, these are slaves of a Most High God, and, and, and they 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 are bringing the, the 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 word of salvation." Paul said, "In the name of Jesus," and he said, "In the name of Jesus, I believe that everything that was in heaven stood up on tiptoe. I know that the powers." That, that formed the world, formed the earth and the world was, was shaken because, listen, God's getting ready to do something. Amen. 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 God had his attention on what was happening right there. Amen. And the Bible says right there in that little verse, verse number 18, and he came out the same hour. Amen. God knows how to deliver. Yes, he does. Amen. Listen, Amen. now, here's a problem. When you are invoking the name of Jesus Christ, when you evoke, invoke the name of Jesus Christ, you got to know that you're engaging in a serious challenge to fight against the powers of darkness. When you, when you invoke Jesus Christ's name, amen, amen, you're engaging in something that's serious. You're engaging in a challenge against the powers of darkness. That's why I said it's serious now. It's ain't no play thing. You don't just, just well, one thing, but if you look at Exodus chapter number 20, amen, Exodus chapter number 20, verse number 7 says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold you guiltless who takes his name in vain. Amen. That law is still good. Amen. 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 It means that you have God's attention. Now, enemies of the cross will join ranks together. Anytime you invoke the name of Jesus Christ, you can rest assured that those enemies of the cross of Christ are going to join ranks. Amen. They're going to, they, they, they'll find, they find each other. I, I don't know how they do, but, but, well, I do know how they do. Amen. They'll find each other. Amen. And they'll combine their forces to resist you. To come, because this is what happened. This young woman was delivered. And when she was delivered, no more selling of the trinkets. Amen. She didn't work for her pimps no more. Amen, somebody. She put it down. She wasn't doing them drugs no more. Amen. She wasn't, she wasn't tearing up the bottle. Amen. She wasn't smoking them little funny cigarettes no more. None, none, of, none of that. She got off the dance floor. Amen. Started dancing for the Lord. Amen. Well, there were some folks who didn't like that. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says that they snatched up Paul and Silas. Amen. 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 Because see, when when you invoke the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, enemies are going to join forces together. They're going to con co co combine their efforts to do you in, to take you out. Yeah. Amen. And maybe that's probably why folks don't, you know, invoke the name of Jesus right. on behalf of somebody else. Come on. Amen. A a amen. Yeah. amen. But, but, but Paul invoked the name of Jesus Christ on her behalf. Yeah. Yeah. And commanded that the spirit depart from her. Amen. A amen. And the Bible says it happened. Now there's only one other thing that I'm going to share with you and I'm going to be out your way. Because I did say one. Number one, listen. When you invoke the name of Jesus Christ, you are engaging in a serious challenge. Right? Number two, 
The enemies of the cross of Christ are going to join ranks. They're going to come at you. You, you got that now. Amen. You're in this fight now. We just got done singing in the very beginning uh, about being on the battlefield. Amen. Right? But, but understand this. Listen, the fight that you're in, it can be, it can be wicked. It can be vicious. It can be very, very tragic. But here is the good news. Here is the good news. God will honor your faithfulness. When you invoke the name of Jesus Christ on the behalf of somebody else, and although you are entering into this challenge, this serious challenge, and although enemies are going to come against you, you got to know that God will honor your faithfulness. Even in the midst of a mess, God will honor your faithfulness. You, you, you know the story. They were put in jail, Paul and Silas, because Paul used what he knew about Jesus Christ and, and called on the name of Jesus on this woman's behalf. The magistrates, or the magistrates, the people in charge of, of the city, heard about it. And they heard about how, the, how it impacted the economy. And so they put Paul and Silas in jail. We don't know how long they were in there. But what we do know is that at midnight, at midnight, they began, the Bible says they began doing what? They were in there praying. Verse 25, and at midnight, Paul and Silas, first of all, prayed. You see that there? They prayed and they sang songs. They sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard it too. Oh, my goodness. But the Bible says that, that the gates, that there was some kind of an earthquake. And them gates opened up, the chains fell off. And Paul and Silas both were free. Amen. Don't tell me what God can do. Yeah. Amen. Because the God that I serve, the God yeah. that I have yeah. come to know, the God that I study about between these 66 books yeah. of the Bible, yeah. amen, that we call God's words, that is God's word. Yeah. We know that God can defend. Yeah. Yes, he can. Oh, yeah. God can, God can, he can fight for you. Yes, amen. Amen. And, and, and if he decides not to fight for you, he can deliver you. Yes. Yes, he can. God can deliver you. God can provide for all that we need. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when the enemies come at you, he can protect you. Yes, yes he can. And, 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 and that, that's the same God that does all these things. He opens up doors yeah. that no man can close. Yeah. And he'll close doors that no man can open. He will, God also allows other people, yeah. amen, to bless you. Amen. amen. And God can allow other people to hurt you too. Yes. Amen. So true. That's true. So true. Amen. So trust him. Trust him. Trust God. God can, but you and I need to trust him. We need to trust his word. Amen. Amen. And trust that what he did for you before, he can do again. Amen. Just trust God's track record. Don't trust yours. Amen. Trust God's Amen. track record. Amen. His track record is right here. Amen. 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 He said, I will never, never. leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's saying that to you right now. Amen. Whatever you're going through, Amen. I'm with you. And even though you may not recognize the fact that he's there with you, Believe and trust that he's there. Oh, yeah. amen. amen. He's a good God. Oh, yeah. And it, it, this is the same people here in this text that he later on wrote a letter to. Yeah. He, and he reminded them, he said, look, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you. Yeah. Has God begun any kind of work in you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That he who has begun a good work in you will perform it. He'll keep on working it out. He's a God that works it out. That's right. Amen. But
but he wants us to have his mind. There in chapter 2 of that letter, Philippians, he wants us to have his mind. Let his mind be in you. It was also in Christ Jesus. He goes on to tell us, yes, what? Well, look, look, well, look, we, we're, we're not what we should be. Amen. And we're not what we ought to be. And he says, he said, listen, I'm not all that. But what I am, I'm going to keep pressing. What God has given me, I'm going to keep pressing toward the mark. For the prize, for the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And then he ends in the last, in that fourth chapter, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Whatever is going on in your life today, turn it over to the Lord. Give it to him. He can work it out. Amen. He can, he can, he can, he can handle it. God can handle anything that's going on in our lives. We just got to trust him. Amen. So just remember, remember during the course of the day that God can. God can do whatever it is that needs to be done. Amen. Amen. So let's give God praise. Church. Amen.